Hi, um, so I'm going to be talking about how to survive on call. Um, it's hopefully quite a quick presentation. Um, essentially, the first thing I can say is try not to worry too much. Um, the first time you go on call is always quite daunting, um, but actually it's a really great experience. You kind of act independently. Um, you get to do kind of all the things that you were trained to do and you don't just kind of go around and scribe. Um, and it can be a really, really good learning experience and you kind of get to see lots of different things. So first things first, preparation is key. Um, get there a little bit early. Um, parking at the moment is fab because there's all the car parks are free and there's kind of lots available with COVID um, but generally you know you want to give yourself a decent amount of time to go around that LGI car park because it can be murder. Um, make sure you arrive kind of maybe 15 minutes early just to make sure that you kind of get in your scrubs if you need to be in scrubs um, and that also you know if you need PP or you need to do certain things that you've kind of you're there and you know what you're doing. Um, find out where it is um, and who's going to be there. Your team will let you know um, so you kind of just follow the F1 that you're paired with and that should be fab. Um, make sure you know simple things so like know what the the um, code for the treatment room is know where the loo is there's nothing worse than when you suddenly need the loo and you don't know where on earth it is and um, make sure you know where the nearest abg machine is because you don't want to be trying to work that out when you've got a poorly patient um, make sure you've got all the essentials so you know you need your pen your stethoscope don't use nhs pens they are terrible um, you need to have pockets as Anna mentioned and again if you do need PPE make sure that you've got the right visor and mask or whatever on. So snacks and food is really key these are long sort of 12 hour shifts so you need to make sure that you've got um, things to keep you going and make sure that you're drinking plenty. Tray bakes are a saviour and um, there's a really great book that I've put up um, there's also a non-vegetarian version and there's all sorts just whack it all in a tray and then it's done for like the four days um, so I would fully recommend that. Um, sleep is massively important make sure you get to bed on time um, I read the book Why We Sleep and it was terrifying. It's so good to make sure that you've got a fully, full night of sleep because then you just feel a bit more on it. Um, and lastly, just make sure that you introduce yourself. Just say, you know, I'm one of the new F1s. Um, I'm on call. This is my first day. If you tell people it's your first day, people will take sympathy on you. Um, and, you know, it won't, it won't be as bad as you think it will be. So first thing is the handover. Um, so you tend to do sort of a junior to junior handover and then you do kind of the whole team handover, which we discussed sort of briefly before. Um, you want to make sure that you know who's ill, um, so who to kind of prioritise for ward run and who your seniors need to be aware of. So you need sort of details of the patients. You may need to discuss these um, with other people and you kind of need to go uh, know what's going on. Um, make sure you've got a bleep, make sure you know what bleep it is and make sure you know that it's working. Um, I had a really lovely couple of hours before thinking that I had no jobs to do, but actually my bleep wasn't quite functioning as I thought so don't do that um, make sure you know what your seniors bleep is as well um, sometimes they will give you their mobile and that's fine too um, but just make sure that you've definitely got a way of contacting them um, and also just try and be speedy the night team will be shattered and they will want to go home um, but also just make sure that they are all okay to go home check no one's looking kind of particularly tired and they're all safe to drive so a handover, we've pretty much gone through on one of the other ones. The main thing is obviously prioritising all the jobs, making sure you know a little bit about the patients. If they've got a scan, why? Um, and make sure that you've got an escalation plan in place. Um, but all of that will be on the other presentation as well. What will we be doing? Um, so there's all sorts of things. Hopefully you'll just be relaxing in the mess, um, but hopefully you won't be running around like a headless chicken. Um, obviously you will go with a sort of normal day team and help with the handover, the ward round, do all the jobs. Um, I'd fully recommend that you do that anyway because it means that you know a bit more about the patients so that when people do go home, you know a bit more about what's going on. There'll be lots of clinical skills to do. So this is a time to get all your things signed off. Um, but remember, if you are busy, there are the clinical support workers available um, and they are there to help you. So make sure you call them and the nurse can always call them as well. Um, you'll be assessing patients, you may be clerking in new ones, you hopefully won't be doing too many but there will be sort of fours reviews and things like that to do um, but as I said you know the list is, is endless. Um, obviously at the moment it's a slightly different time but definitely when you know in August hopefully when things have calmed down a bit. If you are interested in theatre ask if you can go into theatre if it's particularly quiet. Um, if your reg is carrying a, uh, the trauma bleep um, ask if you can go along with them. It's a great learning experience. At the end of the day, you are here to learn. Um, so make sure you just make the most of this, the opportunity. Right, so who are you going to call? Um, so this is again why it's so important at Handover to kind of work out who your seniors are. You're incredibly lucky in the fact that you kind of are paired with an F1 who is a little bit more experienced than you. So you kind of have someone there all ready to just kind of um, get ideas off and, and work through things. Um, obviously you kind of 
you try and escalate within your own team first and then you go to other specialties. Um, your F2 or your SHO, so that could be a CT or an ST, um, they tend to be the first point of call. Um, if they're really busy, if they're not there, if they're really stressed, you know, escalate sensibly. If you are really, really worried about a patient, you're completely within your rights to go to your reg. Um, again, there have been circumstances when, you know, if your reg really isn't available, if your reg is really stuck, you can go to your consultant. Um, they are actually generally very, very friendly and very lovely. And if you do have a question, you, and an unwell patient, you need to be able to escalate that up properly. Um, critical care outreach teams are absolute lifesavers. They're fantastic. They're so, so lovely. Um, they've cha their roles changed a little bit with the kind of COVID updates. And again, that'll be China changing on a week on week basis. Um, but they can come, if you're worried about a patient, they can come and review them with you or even just call them to kind of put them on their radar as such. Um, they're a really good way into ITU. So then if they see the patient and they are concerned, they can kind of get an anaesthetist or get a more senior doctor straight away, um, which is fab. Um, as I mentioned before, CSWs are great. They can do loads of clinical skills so make sure you use them don't just kind of get swamped with all the bloods and things to do um, and also you know there's other specialist nurses and, and other people around there's the bat team who kind of do the stroke side of things there's loads of people so you just make sure that you do escalate appropriately and if you are worried about a patient you have to kind of make sure that if even if your SHO is available you go to your reg um, and kind of so on and so forth right so when to call um, essentially, whenever you are worried about a patient, you are not sure about what's going on, you need to kind of call and ask about um, and ask a senior or someone else. Um, go through the notes, do what you can. Um, but if you are concerned, you need to kind of make contact with someone else. Um, obviously, if it's a really unwell patient, you need to do the A to E. And if um, they are kind of not responsive, you can't get a pulse it's the double two, double two, you need to put out a crash call. Um, don't worry about putting out a crash call. The first time you do it is always quite terrifying, um, but you are better to have put out a crash call and everyone come and the patient be okay than the other alternative. Um, so just if you're worried or you're not sure what to do, just make sure that you call someone and obviously if the patient looks really, really unwell, do what you can in terms of basic A to E and you, you should have been sort of ILS, um, BLS trained, um, but make sure you get other people um, where possible. Receiving bleeps can sometimes feel like the bane of your life. Um, you have these really high-tech little pieces of equipment co uh, complete with the slightly dodgy looking case um, that you will be carrying around. Um, the biggest thing is, Anna spoke a little bit about SBAR, um, make sure that you get a decent handover. It is not okay for someone to call you up and just say, so-and-so needs fluids. We kind of need to know why. You don't just kind of prescribe them ad hoc. You need to know a little bit about the patient and what's been going on. Um, equally, if you're bleeping someone, they kind of expect the same back. Um, so make sure that you know, you have kind of asked all the right questions. Um, with things like regular meds, things like that, when are they due? You know, if it's two in the morning, do you need to go and take a medical a medication history right now? Probably not. It can probably wait until six when, you know, ward round and drug round will be a little bit later. Um, again, use the CSWs and it's okay. If, you, if a nurse rings and said, oh, do you mind doing this? If it's a non-urgent job and the patient isn't unwell, you're completely within your rights to say, I'm so, so sorry. I'm really, really busy at the moment. Can I call you back in half an hour? Or do you mind calling me back in half an hour? If you just explain it, it tends to be a little bit easier and it's just a little bit less tense. And that's quite kind of nice for everyone, really. Um, Obviously, if you're bleeping, so it's 80, so dial 80, and then you dial the bleep that you want to um, get hold of, so it should be a four-digit number, um, and then you dial where you're calling from, so another four-digit number. Just be careful if you're on a portable phone, sometimes the number isn't attached to them, so you can end up kind of not knowing what the number is, um, but also make sure that you kind of stay near the phone. Um, there is nothing worse, and you will find this out, that if someone bleeps you and you call back really quickly and they've just sudden, somehow miraculously disappeared, um, so make sure that if you are bleeping someone, you're kind of around um, and go from there. Things I wish I'd known, um, a lot of things, um, but a lot of it is to do with practicalities. Don't worry about your knowledge, it will be there and the whole point of this is that you do need to learn. So kind of, I think normally you panic more about that you're not going to know the ins and outs of, I don't know, nephrotic syndrome. It's not anything like that. You need to just know the kind of practicalities of the job. Um, ask wards to make lists what's quite nice is sometimes on general surgery you cover quite a few wards if they just make a list of kind of com normal jobs that aren't urgent they can you can literally go and um, pick up the job list and work through them as and when rather than kind of being incessantly bleeped um, use the protocols and use the guidelines they are fab so the protocols for example for hy hyperkalemia you literally just click on it and then all the drug treatments will come up um, likewise for a surgical admission it'll come in so you've got analgesia you've got an antiemetic you've got everything there um, and it tends to work really well and it saves you quite a lot of time. Um, I've already spoken about the antibiotic guidelines, they're fab, you literally can't go wrong, you just click on an organ and if you're not really sure about the organ there's an option for that too so it's really good. 
always take a break that is so important your safety is priority you need to be hydrated you need to be alert you need to be able to work um, if you're struggling with ABGs or if patients really really hate ABGs you can also do VBGs VBGs are just as quick they will give you a lactate and you know the pH obviously you know if it's something about like respiratory failure you probably do need to get an ABG but just think about kind of alternative ways you can do it and you can do that whilst you're taking bloods as well um, which is good to do um, finally don't use NHS pens I have ruined many a nice trouser with exploding pens and you just look like a bit of an idiot if you've got pen running all the way down your leg when you're trying to talk to someone um, bring your own it it will get nicked but you know it's worth a try and the final point is that you can say no if you are out of your comfort zone and if you really don't know what's going on you are completely within your rights to kind of ask for clarification or maybe speak to a senior you don't have to do kind of everything you know if you're asked to do something and you're really not sure don't feel like you must do just because you've been um, told to do it by a nurse or something you can ask for further clarification the other thing is exception report. Um, unfortunately, you know, on-call shifts can be super duper busy. There will be times when you stay late. Um, if you do, make sure you document it. That will be either your time or you will get a bit more money from it. Um, you should be sent a link. Make sure you save it and make sure you do. It's not because you're incompetent. I think that's a kind of common mistake when you're a first in F1. I just didn't exception report in my first job because I thought, well, it must be me because I'm just really slow. That's not the case. You need to kind of get down. If you need more support, essentially, if there's enough exception reports, people will pay attention and there might be another person working with you. So they're really useful um, and just make sure you do it. Um, the more you do, the, the easier it becomes. So finally, do a fun thing. You cannot just eat, sleep and work. You know, even if it's like half an hour, just have a nice bath, read a book, do whatever maybe make the use of that extra hour for exercise we get whatever you want to do just make sure you give yourself some time to just de-stress slightly on call can be hectic it can be busy um, and you need to just make sure that you are looking after yourself in in terms of this and make sure you're talking to someone as well if you need to okay so last but not least um a bit of kind of covid specific um chat really your safety is the priority. Um, you need to be making sure that you're in the right um, PPE, you've got all the stuff there. What you're doing and what you're volunteering to do is fantastic, but you need to kind of make sure that you're in all the right stuff. Um, if you feel unwell, stay home. Um, there will be people that you can talk to. I think it's kind of your line manager or your supervisor, but again, you'll be sent all that out by your team. Um, so just don't worry, don't feel like you're letting anyone down. The worst thing you can do is kind of try and carry on working. Um, if you feel sick, stay at home. Um, and that's that really. Again as well if you feel scared, if you feel overwhelmed, those are all completely normal emotions to be feeling. Make sure you talk to someone. Anna's gone through all the kind of help available and there's loads out there. Um, you've also got our emails. If you need sort of someone to just chat to, we can do that too. Whatever you need, there is support there and you're absolutely not alone, not alone in this. Um, best of luck. I think you're all going to be absolutely fantastic and come August you're going to be the dreamiest F1s ever. Um, and thank you again for doing this as well. It's, it's so great.